heading over to the east side. Nate's in the hospital. He's got pneumonia. Going up to see him. I swing by and see Uncle first. Make sure Uncle's okay. He's not answering the phone. I don't like when people don't answer the phone. When I first got back, I, uh, my dad was always calling me to go over and check on my grandpa. I'd see grandpa at least once a week, but he was my Mr. McGill. He couldn't see. His hearing was going. He was pretty much cut off from the world. anniversary, January 3rd, we are out, just finished up a nice steak dinner, my dad called, said, hey, will you go over and check on Pop, he's not answering, well, I had done it countless times before, figured I'd get over there, he'd be out in the shop, you know, or he'd be He'd be out in the shop working, or he'd be down in the basement working, or got over there, and I, I had a feeling. I mean, I just had a feeling. I even told my son Joshua to stay out in the car. The feeling was so strong. And I come in and found him uh, with his forehead on the edge of the table, sitting in the chair. Went out and got Amy, she certified CPR. And she come in and felt him and everything. She said, it's too late. You know, he's gone. Uh, called nine, ambulance 911. Cops came. And I called my, my dad told him to call my uncles and wanted to move my grandfather into a recliner. I told the cop, I said, I'm going to move him into the recliner so my uncles and my father don't have to see him like this. He had drool hanging out of his mouth. Just wouldn't have been good for them. And the cop said, you're not moving him anywhere. And he said it real, just real aggressive and shit. And I didn't like it. I said, motherfucker, I bet I do. And uh, paramedic, thank God, because I was, just found my grandfather dead. I was, I was willing to fight over it, I'll tell you that. And the paramedic said, if we can move him, you know, we'll rather have him in a recliner. The paramedic moved him in there, and uh, just looked like the old man was sleeping. But uncle, his legs been given out on him. Eight two. I can see it. He's losing weight. He's getting tired. I'm getting tired. Having a hard time breathing today. But I just, I love Uncle, but I'm sick of death. And I go to a funeral tomorrow. Another one of my friends. Biz, Michelle's daughter, our sister, she, uh, Biz also, our Michelle was married to uh, Dwayne for a long time, and then her and Bobby was together for a couple years, but Biz's son overdosed, so 
bury another one of our friend's kids. It's fucked up. I'm just sick of death. Got the smell of it in my nose. I'm sick of seeing it. And the holidays. The holidays are always really hard for me. It's my mother and my grandma Rose that really, really made the holidays special. They're both gone now. Bobby called me just so I'm going out the door. He works for Nip Roofing. That's who I went through to get the siding done and the awning and the gutters and stuff. They subcontract all that shit out. But uh, just so I'm going out the door, <laughs> I had the Honduras guys on the siding crew and they wrapped the fascia. And then got her crew to send guys were out. It's funny, a couple guys on the guys were crew knew Bobby, they knew Nate. They heard of me. <laughs> like, you know Mark Volkerding? Oh yeah, I heard by him. Yeah, that's me. Oh shit. And it's just Bobby's on the crew. He said, but we're heading to your house now. He's on the crew. They're going to put up the awnings. Kind of glad, though, that I give them guys a break at least a few hours from being on the roof. But, uh, so then we'll have to pay down, you know, the rest of the money. I think we owe them like 8000 8, on it. Pay that. And uh, I need to get finished cleaning the house up and get a realtor out there and look at it. But yeah, hey, he says he's going to quit smoking. I mean, him with the congestive heart failure, it might actually buy him some quality time left. But matter. I mean, nothing can be done. I mean, my shit's... It's on God now, you know, whenever. Some days I almost walk them to death. It's really, it's probably the depression. I mean, I'm always physically tired. My body is... Sometimes I feel like a pit bull that's charged the police and been shot five times. It's already dead. It don't know it though. It's something primal kicks in and it's still coming. Uh, I don't know, man. That's how I feel though. I think the only reason I'm still alive is time I ever lost my legs underneath me. Only time. Ever. It's when he had that first heart attack. Well, Amy said it was a stroke. That's what Tara said at first, but Amy picked up the phone. She's like, hey, Tara. And then I watched her old facial expression change. changed. She, uh, I kept saying, what? You know, what? What's going on? What? She kept holding up her finger. And finally, I said, God damn it. Fucking, that's my brother. You tell me what the fuck's going on, you know? And she said he had a stroke, and I 
I had just been through all those rehabilitation classes and going up to the hospital every day for a month and a half to see my buddy Kirby that I was in a state race with him. We was at Chaddock for a year and a half together. But uh, I had just gone through all that with him and she said, you know, Nate had a stroke. My legs just, just went out from underneath me. We buried over, we buried 33 brothers. Some of their kids, and a lot of other people, but it's all because of the lifestyle we lived, and we didn't set a good example for our children. Thank God, thank God in heaven. That we went out to Arizona because if my children would have grown up in this fucking cesspool over here. I might have buried a couple of them already. So I'm eternally grateful for that. There's East Saint. Well, I'm gonna get off here and get myself together and try to put a happy smiling face on for Uncle Nate. They don't need negative right now. And that saying's kind of true, you know, the guys always smiling and laughing and clowning. It's usually a motherfucker that's hurting the worst. I'm uh, going to make sure these two are all right. Much love and respect to all of you, though. Peace out.